is leg day and a lot of people have been asking me how do you use the um, blood flow restriction bands for leg day because basically I have fucked up my knees and my hips from not only just training heavy but you guys remember that story of me kneeing someone in the head over and over again which fucked my knee up which I've been having problems with that it's kind of been flaring up but more so my hip from um, squatting for a long time heavy and leg pressing for a long time I wind up having these issues with um, inflammation in my hip as well as my knee so I gotta go lighter. There's no fucking way that I can train heavy anymore. So how do you stimulate the muscle to maintain the size? Not really, you know, necessarily trying to build right now, but you can also build muscle with a blood flow restriction too. Um, Big Frank from um, 5% Nutrition actually chimed in on my Instagram and said that he's been using the blood flow restriction for his arms for years. And that guy is fucking stacked. So more and more people are actually popping up saying, yeah, I use it. I just don't really talk about it because, it, you know, I didn't think much about it. I thought everybody knew about it, but a lot of people don't know about it. So blood flow restriction bands, the company, the actual company itself, we're going to use the uh, the legs bands today, and we're going to go ahead and train if Erin ever gets up. She's still in her lazy mode. I'm so lazy. <laughs> Meanwhile, she's already been to Whole Foods and went grocery shopping all this shit before I even got out of bed this morning. I did fasted cardio. I Look at Brady. Food. I think Brady needs more toys on his... You need some more toys? I don't think there's enough toys there. Look. <laughs> today we have a sampling of the flavor of the first of the GIFD products. This is the Wicked Watermelon. Now, why Wicked Watermelon? So all these products are gonna have flavors. Everything's gonna be based around, you know, me. I mean, it's my products, it's literally my thing. So in Rhode Island, we say Wicked a lot. So Wicked Watermelon is the first flavor. And uh, the second flavor is gonna be Awesome as Fuck Berry. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> Aaron's laughing back there. Whatever, so let's give this one a shot. Fucking Wicked. Why is there rice all over? Hey, why is there rice all over the floor? Look, feel that rice? Look, it's all over the floor. floor it's Eat rice. the rice it's off the floor. You're supposed to be eating the rice. Eat the rice. It's disgusting. And we're gonna get started with the workout. First exercise: a stability movement prep exercise. It's a standing in place lunge with a slider on my foot. Now, this is not the same thing. Some people are like, "Why don't you do walking lunges?" It's not the same thing. If you try both of these, many people can do walking lunges. You try this, they fall right over. Literally, this is an exercise that takes a lot of balance, a lot of stability. It also, as you see with this foot, as my left leg goes back right here, you can see how far that hip stretch, the, excuse me, the hip flexor stretches. I have tight hip flexors. So this is actually a good warm-up movement prep movement before the rest of my leg workout, as well as for the stability, which again, I neglected for the longest time, which I'm trying to play catch up for, or catch up with now, on the way that my legs and my body functions as a whole. From there, we move on to the next exercise, which is the leg press. I don't use the regular leg press with the plates, because my ego gets out of control. I wind up piling more and more plates on there and I wind up either hurting my hip or my knee, so I literally stay away from it. I go over here to the hoist. I use the whole stack for anywhere from 15 to 20 reps for three to four sets, depending on where I'm feeling, um, you know, if I'm feeling any pain in my knees or anything like that. Today, no pain in the knees, feeling decent. Just go ahead and pump it through, get as many reps as I can, up to 15, and then just rest about three minutes in between sets and on to the next set. From there, we move on to sissy squats. Now this one, it's a little bit different. Now, as you see, kind of go down, when you come to the top, you kind of lean back. So it's kind of hard to see right here, but I'm not actually going straight up and down. I'm actually leaning back a little bit, which keeps a lot of tension on the quads. You won't feel any of this through the hamstrings or glutes or anything like that. You feel it all in the quads right above the knee and that teardrop right there. We move on from that over to something that you can actually, if you look right now, watch as I go down and I push, you can see where my shorts are. You can see the vibrations of me shaking. The gluteus medius for whatever reason, maybe it's not like that on everybody, but for me, squatting, leg pressing, doing all those heavy movements throughout the years like a bodybuilder, developed my gluteus maximus, but gluteus medius was not developed strength-wise. So it actually caused an imbalance. Now what happens is the gluteus maximus gets so strong and tight, it pulls, and if your medius is not strong enough, it causes lower back pain. This is a problem with a lot of bodybuilders. A lot of bodybuilders have lower back pain. It's not because their lower back is weak, it's because their gluteus medius is weak and the gluteus maximus is too strong. So therefore I've incorporated some of these movements in there. You can see like right there, it's not a hard movement. I don't have a lot of weight on there, but the muscle itself is so weak compared to the other muscles, you can actually see it shaking, which is kind of embarrassing to be totally honest with you. And from there, we're gonna move on with the blood flow restriction bands. The link in the description box below where you can get the leg bands as well as the arm bands from this company, Blood BFR bands. And what I do is I'll take these things and I hold them by the little loop. And then as I wrap them around, you can see right here, like some people use knee wraps. These things are way, way better than knee wraps. And with that Velcro, literally you put it under your leg, boom, stick it, done. Like you don't have to tie it in, tuck it in, nothing like that. Very easy to use. They're very strong, like very, very tight. 
so they last a lot longer than regular knee wraps that people use. And again, you see I go right underneath, and what I'll do is I'll hold those little straps. You'll see them right there. See those little black straps? I hold the one on top and then wrap from there. So as you get that thing wrapped around your leg like that, on the other side right here, you see we grab both hands and then pull it tighter again. So you're getting enough blood flow restriction, but you're not getting to the point where you're like your feet go numb or like your feet swell or anything like that. You get around the back, just push down, boom, Velcro sticks, all done, ready to go. Okay, from here, what we do is the final, the superset, the final superset. After all the movement prep and the leg presses and the compound movements, leg curls supersetted with leg extensions. Now, lightweight, again, because I'm trying to protect my knees and my tendons, and this is the optimal way that I have found to do it for myself and many of my clients. We literally get on here, do 15, 20, 25. You know, usually the first set, I'll be totally honest with you, I can get higher reps as you go to the second, third set, or third round. In these, it gets harder and harder for the muscle to actually move. The muscle is actually hitting failure because they can't recover fast enough in between sets with the blood flow restriction bands. And hitting failure, we all know, is the fastest and most optimal way to build muscle. It doesn't have to be heavy, but it has to be failure. So this is another way to do that without totally killing your tendons and your ligaments in your knees, which completely have been smashed on me through the years of just doing stupid stuff. We've talked about that before, but we'll go on here. So we go back and forth, leg curls, supersetted straight up with leg extensions. And right here, right about now, I mean, it, it, it hurts. And my hamstrings still hurt from the leg curls that I just did. I mean, they're burning like crazy, even though I'm sitting on them. I'll go right here, boom, right back to the leg curl. And what I'll do is I'll count this as one set. So two times back and forth is one set. You can see the weight. I mean, I only got about 60, 70 pounds on there, something like that. And as I'm squeezing right now, already the pain is just almost unbearable. By the time I get to 10 reps, it hurts so bad that it's like I feel like I've done a 100 rep set. Like somebody's got a blowtorch in the back of my hamstring. But you get to as many reps as you can, 25 reps, 30 reps. If you can hit 30 reps, I would add a little weight. There's really no need to be hitting more than 30 reps. Right as soon as you're done, right back into the other one. Now, again, you have these bands on your legs. So they're restricting that blood flow from coming back out of your legs. So the pump is getting bigger and bigger and harder. And it's getting harder to actually contract the muscles because they're fatiguing. So you can see as soon as I'm done with this final set on the leg extensions, when I stand up and I take the bands off, which the bands are super easy to get off. I've seen people use knee wraps and they try to like tuck them in. When they go to wrap it, grab, like unwrap it, they grab the thing, they yank on it, it won't come out. And they start to freak out because sometimes they tie it off too tight. These things, Velcro, you just literally just pop it and it comes right off. So the Velcro is strong enough to hold it on no matter what you're doing, whether it's squatting, extensions, whatever. And you can see right here, all you do is reach down, boom, right off. You can actually see the vein coming through the spandex on that quad, the left quad on the outside. The pump is so bad on these, it's just, it's incredible. They drop right off, step right out, done. Very easy to use, very effective to use, just like that. And we'll move on to the final exercise again with some gluteus medius work. You can actually see this too. If you look at my shirt, you can see the, the shirt shaking. The twitching again from the gluteus medius not being strong enough and um, this is usually where I finish off the workout right here so I'll literally get maybe about 18 sets total for legs in here movement prep compound movements isolation movements pump movements gluteus medius everything that I need in there to be strong functional healthy and fit so we're done with the leg workout as you guys saw Leg workout's a little different. Like I'll do one compound movement, which is basically the leg press, and what I'll do is the whole rack or the whole stack for like 10 to 12, size 15 reps, whatever I feel like. But I do some stability work. I do some like abductor work, which um, the reason why my hip has that problem, my lower back, was squatting over and over again. You build up these muscles while you're doing these exercises. You don't realize that you're losing functionality. So when you stop being a bodybuilder, you stop being a powerlifter, you don't have this functional strength anymore. You're doing stuff like walking up the stairs, like sideways carrying a couch or something, you can't do it. Like you pull muscle and you get these injuries and you have problems with your hips and stuff. So my training has to revolve around, you know, some strength training, not to be super strong or whatever, but also the stability training and, you know, the um, one-legged stuff and things like that, different angles and shit. And also, like this guy saw me doing the kickbacks. Like that kickback, I really try to pull my leg up from the gluteus medius. All that leg pressing, heavy leg pressing, and all the heavy squatting hits the gluteus maximus a lot, but not really the medius. So we're going to go finish our day. Hopefully this can help you guys out a little bit. Always use the uh, BFR bands at the end of my workout to try to push more blood in there. And it is so fucking painful. It is so painful, but it helps really actually to recover. That blood gets sucked in, it helps recover. So we're going to actually slug down our Wicked Watermelon Post right now. First time. I just want that 
much shit in my body as fast as possible so I can recover as fast as possible ready for the next workout. Thank you guys for tuning in. I'm Myo Saint I approve this message. We are.